the elevator kept going down and down beneath the earth. Inside was a short man in a suit who seemed a bit scared and two sunglasses wearing soldiers on either side behind him, wearing bulletproof vests and wielding state-of-the-art carbines. I mean, in a world where people just have these incredible gauntlets, are these carbines worth anything really? I guess not, not everyone is a gauntlet knight, so you still need some some real firepower. There was nothing that identified the troop's nationality or affiliation. Even their guns were the latest model from a famous manufacturer which wasn't yet in use by official militaries. All this made it easy to guess that they were either personally hired soldiers or mercenaries of some sort. Oh, the funny music is starting. However, there was nothing unrefined about the elevator or the behavior or attire. And there wasn't even a speck of dust to be seen, much less trash lying about. Why would it be trash? <laughs> it was almost painfully refined and the men in the suit seemed to be overwhelmed by it. Eventually, after descending for several minutes, the elevator finally stopped. I think he's going to the Illuminati Kings, right? When the door opened with faint swoosh, it revealed a massive dimly lit space behind it. It was lifeless, tasteless and simple, without any sort of decoration. However, it also had a noble feeling, as if it hadn't deigned to conform to changing modes of decoration throughout the eras. Wow. Okay, just to preface, they are not naked. They are wearing bodysuits. Okay, you two? In that massive space were two shadows that appeared to be girls. However, something about them seemed odd. For example, the objects seemingly, seemingly attached to their left arms were definitely gauntlets. As the girl's expressionless eyes slowly turned to face the man in the elevator, they quietly held out their right arms. There, with a scattering of angel feathers, two oversized 76mm 62 car caliber super rapid cannons designed for warships were summoned into existence. These clearly weren't weapons that one individual was supposed to use against another. It was almost as though they'd summoned giant metal beasts, so big that one had to look up to see them, and it looked like the tamers were just about to order them to strike. The man let out a small cry and flinched at this greeting, but the cannons weren't pointing at him, rather at his bodyguards I guess. They were aimed behind him, at the two soldiers who had brought him here. The soldiers had not been given permission to take even one step out of the elevator into the space. They were aware of this, so they pushed the other man in the back, telling him to go on alone. After the man left the elevator quivering, the doors shut with a faint sound and it disappeared into the darkness. When only the suited man was left, the girls erased the cannon state summoned. Where, where is this place? Did you two call me here? The girls didn't answer. I think they're robots or something. Why are they so blue? Are they smurfs? On the contrary, they were completely expressionless, as if they hadn't even noticed the man talking to them. Then, the man, who was quiv quivering more than ever, was finally answered by a voice. I like the design though, the, the details on the gauntlets and stuff, the arrows. Oh, who, who that? It's fear. <laughs> That's German for four, in case you didn't know. If it's supposed to be pronounced like that. Wasn't there something about Fear 30 or, some, or something before? About um, 34? 34? 43? I don't know. <laughs> Welcome, Doctor, to our research center. A woman, oh, a woman in a lab coat walked out of the darkness and greeted a man. The man who hadn't been able to communicate with anyone else since coming here was so relieved that he broke out into a cold sweat. Oh shit, it's a woman talking to me! <laughs> However, that expression of relief changed into shock when the woman finished walking out of the shadows. Oh holy shit! <laughs> it's, uh, what's her name? Takano, isn't it? N no, that's not possible! I mean, you... You were in Higurashi, <laughs> what are you doing in this story? Activating facial recognition software. Identify. The man opened a Cellcom facial recognition app. A Cellcom is like a smartphone or personal computer that exists in your brain. Thanks for clarifying that now. Um, Psychonia, after we've went through several sections that used it before, but okay, whatever. In this era, it was easy to take things you saw with your naked eye and save them as images or look them up on the net. Jesus Christ, that's like, you can take 
nude pictures of anyone you meet, as long as you see them nude, I guess. And you can immediately upload them as well, so you wouldn't want to be seen by anyone? I don't know, it's... I mean... At least with real cameras you can say, no, don't take a picture of me, I don't want that. But like this, you can't really say, don't look at me. Complete. Why did I go in this tangent? <laughs> Fuck me. First possible match, 97% field pricey. Physicist. Okay, it's her. Bio. A young genius physicist from AUU, Germany, who invented the spiritium high efficiency energy conversion technique, also known as the Dreise conversion. <laughs> Why would you be named after random numbers? Why would it be named after Rule 34 especially? <laughs> oh god. She was awarded the Bernhard Prize in physics for this achievement. However, on December 9th, the day before the ceremony, she disappeared from the hotel in Oslo where she was staying. Two days later, on December 11th, 11th, a roasted body was found in a city trash incinerator, and it was later confirmed to be Dreisig herself. The investigation team eventually concluded that she got drunk, accidentally went into the collection hatch of an automated trash collector, failed to respond to repeated warnings, and was then thrown into an incinerator and killed in a tragic accident. It's a lot of, you know, what-ifs and, and accidents here. <laughs> Failing to respond to repeated warnings. How shit-faced drunk do you have to be? However, because of Dreisig's accomplishments and various conspiracy theories, many are still convinced that she was assassinated by someone. Or faked her death, apparently. Oh. Oh. Just looking at her makes him... More sweaty. <laughs> are you looking me up with a cell com? Oh shit, she knows. I see. It looks like the Oslo city police made a mistake. But it's strange. This year, you should be... But you still look like you're... <laughs> Come on now, Doctor. This is a world of those who are not human. We've already been freed from the concept of time, which makes people age. Since it was coming from a genius physicist, he couldn't tell if it was true or if she was trying to confuse him. He only knew that a genius physicist who had supposedly died mysteriously was alive and had appeared in front of him looking just like she had back then. Yeah, they had gone that nights for a while now, right? So she must have been, she must be ancient. M maybe not ancient, but at least 50 to 60 or something, right? And she looks, anime-wise, she looks like 20, 25. After that, the man started asking questions about Trisic's research. In this era, even an empty-handed human could search for information with their cell at will. I feel like the this, this sentence or the part of a sentence in this era it's repeated a lot. I don't know if it's supposed to mean something. They, they want to keep reminding you that you should, I guess, suspend your disbelief because you're living in a whole other era, I guess? I don't know. It wouldn't be impossible to mimic someone else if you really wanted to. However, searching for information was completely different from understanding it. After asking several questions, the man had to admit that the woman in front of him was either Fiat Reisig herself, or at least a genius scientist on that same level. People who seem to be scientists in lab coats occasionally appeared in this bleak, dim space. The man casually tried to use facial recognition on all of them. Casually. First possible match, 98%. Vitaly Abrikosov, physicist. Supposedly dead! First possible match, 96%. David Wiltschek, physicist. First possible match, 97%. Ogawa Seye, physicist. What on earth? Just by face matching the few people walking by, he was building up a list of young physicists representing the entire world. It's the Illuminati! And all of them had vanished after mysterious disappearances or accidents. And you, you know what? No one found that suspicious before. <laughs> that so many young physicists are just like that, disappearing or dying. It's true that some conspiracy theorists have amused themselves with the string of famous genius physicists who had mysteriously disappeared or died over the past few decades. Thank god some people are still sane. And these are supposed to be the insane people. <laughs> what on earth? What on earth? So, you're all alive? No, it's probably fair to say that we're dead. After all, none of the people here have any ties to the surface anymore compared to the joy of attaining ultimate wisdom, wealth, fame, family, and children mean nothing. All the genius scientists who had just walked by were incredibly enthusiastic for their ages, almost like kids who were planning some sort of prank. 
rather than charming, it was a little disturbing, as though the ideals that dominated the space were completely different from the real world. Yeah, and if you don't have any ties to the real world anymore, who knows what's gonna happen. And I see that you too are the sort of person who would like to come to our side, even if it means abandoning everything you've gained on the surface. I indeed. If I'm able to touch just a bit of God's wisdom, I don't care if I have to sacrifice all my wealth and fame to do it. It's a line all scientists feeling like saying at least once when they're drunk. And in fact, he had said this whenever he got the chance. He had never imagined that someone would actually respond to that call like this. This is a research institution, but we don't call it research. We call it... Translation. D translation If the techniques of the gods were written down in the languages of the gods, do you think mere humans would be able to read it? I see. So you call it... Translation. When you make a discovery, no matter how ground-shaking and ingenious it is, it won't be of any use unless the average person can understand it. Nah, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few discoveries every fucking day that change how we live and how we behave. We just don't really know about it, since it takes a while for the chain of events to reach us. In other words, without the power of translation, all ingenious discoveries get treated the same as the occult. Eh, wrong again. <laughs> Genius scientists have a desire to make discoveries, but they also have a desire to translate discoveries made by people far more ingenious than them. This desire is held only by the few who are hailed as geniuses. Because they're geniuses, they're saddened by the fact that they'll never meet an even greater genius. They want to touch the glimmer of far greater geniuses to translate it. Fuck me, how many times have I read a genius now? In this paragraph alone, it's four times. They don't want to be called geniuses, number five. They want to touch the wisdom of people they would call geniuses, number six. You know... Going back to what I was saying before, that there's a lot of in this era in the text. I've seen a tweet of someone trying to call out the translation team for using a specific term too many times or something. I don't know. I don't even quite remember anymore which term it was. But the translator reacted to it and answered that it, he looked it up in the script and apparently it only came up like two or three times. <laughs> over, over The word count of this is really big, right? So reading something two or three times you shouldn't take notice of it that much, except if you really pay attention to that specific phrase, if it rubs you the wrong way. But this genius, at least six times in this paragraph alone, and I'm not gonna call out the translators on this, because I'm pretty fucking sure Ryokishi himself wrote it like that in Japanese, and he used the Japanese equivalent of genius in here six times to, to just get the point across, I hope. I don't want to think that he didn't, or rather couldn't think of another word for that. Anyway... Again, it's me trying to touch the wisdom of a genius, of Ryokishi himself. Eh? See what I did there? I connected it all together. In this place, several miraculous techniques that we can't even understand are waiting to be translated. Funny how we just talked about translating as well. Um, what kinds of miraculous, te miraculous techniques? Sorry, I butchered that word there. Hehe. <laughs> If you truly join us as a comrade, I'll show you. Oh shit, it's the communists. You aren't about to tell me that it's super high technology from some ancient unknown civilization or something, right? Yeah, like a fucking copy machine that sends you into another universe or something. God damn, that would be one Deus Ex Machina, wouldn't it? Jesus, it could destroy the story in one fell swoop. Just like other stories. Not sure which ones I'm talking about, but... Holy shit. Ushikoshi, how could you fucking kill Zero Time Dilemma like that? <laughs> um, would there be some sort of problem if that were the case? The man attempted to joke casually, trying to make it seem as though he had grown comfortable with the situation. However, a clearly disappointed expression rose to Fear's face. Whether it's super high technology from an ancient civilization, or alien technology, or an Akashic record built into the fabric of reality, can a source of wisdom ever be a problem? You're right. It shouldn't matter where it comes from, as long as it as it gives you information, I guess. No. All of our comrades here simply view the attainment of ultimate wisdom as their greatest joy. They don't mind putting their wealth, fame and even their lives on the line for the sake of that joy. You feel the same, don't you? Isn't that right, Doctor? This really was a world of people who were not human, just as she, as she said. Yes. 
Everyone here is dead. They have already died in our world. Does that make this the underworld? Busyingly far beneath the ground? If I've been invited here while I still live... Oh shit. <laughs> Maybe they, they thought we were arguing, but those gauntlet girls were staring at us through the darkness. You've repeatedly said through your Kizuna that you wouldn't mind losing your life if you could touch the wisdom of the gods, yes? And your achievements more than qualify you to be welcomed in as our comrade. It seems strange to me. When I was first invited here, I was ecstatic, like a maiden in love for the first time. However, you've been fairly lukewarm for a while now. N no! I, um, I haven't been yet able to fully appreciate how amazing this place is. In the first place, um, I haven't even had a chance to see this wisdom you're talking about. Oh. This wisdom is so captivating that it made so many genius scientists abandon everything on the surface. Unless you show me, I um, won't be able to take this all in. So you want to be paid up front, I guess. We're not supposed to show anyone who hasn't sworn to become our comrade. But if it means we'll be able to gain your rare talent, I suppose I could show you before you make your oath. Okay. And if he doesn't, except afterwards, they're just gonna get rid of him anyway. However, this is what she's gonna tell him now. Calling it now. Fear brought her lips up to the man's ear. Jesus, that would be enough for me to make me join. <laughs> her breath didn't carry the warmth of the living. Okay, maybe not. It was the breath of the land of the dead. Hmm, I could try it out at least. At the bottom of the earth. Before that, I want you to tell us about those people we love and respect so, so much. What do you mean? <laughs> you know those people. Come on. I mean the ones who are always giving you their support. Tell me about the three kings who ordered you to investigate this place. Oh, so they are separate to them. Wow. Are they the good guys? I can't really believe that dead scientists are supposed to be the good guys here, but maybe they're just another neutral party. C crap. I need to ask them for help. Quick! I don't think you can quite do that down here. <laughs> I think they have... You've already walked into the trap. Jesus Christ, you're firmly stuck in the spider's web. All you can do now is enjoy being devoured by it, you know? Arrow. Cellcom OS has encountered a fatal error, Puyo. We'd recommend that you reinstall Puyo. Otherwise, please visit the help desk at a Cellcom shop near you, Puyo. W what happened all of a sudden? Did it bug out? No! <laughs> I love welcoming, welcoming in gas. I love getting to share the moment of trembling excitement felt by our true, newly awakened comrades. We sometimes get minions sent by those three like you, but nearly everyone else learned the joy of touching wisdom and converted over to our side, becoming our comrades. Maybe the three kings are the actual good guys. I haven't really considered that. But they seem very sinister. <laughs> I mean, not showing your face is a pretty big sign of that you don't have good intentions, right? Stop trying to ask them for help, Doctor. I want to hear your own heartfelt words. Will you become our comrade? Or not? I couldn't bear to see one of your talent waste away on the surface, ignorant of the joy of touching wisdom. Understand? Then there was a shriek and a cackling voice suddenly rang out. It was one of the scientists that had walked past them. The genius physicist from AU Japan, Ogawa Seiyei. He was facing the empty darkness, cackling all on his own. He also came here as an agent of the Three Kings at first. However, when he learned the joy of touching wisdom, he decided to become our comrade and abandon everything on the surface. It really depends on how soft, how soft wisdom is, you know? I would really love to touch it. I love to touch everything. I, I'm a... That sounded weird, but I'm really, really fond of my sense of, of touch, you know? I, I really like touching surfaces and feeling how rough they are or how soft and stuff. And sometimes I just... When I try to sleep, you know, and there's a wall next to me, sometimes I just put my hand on the wall and I concentrate on what I'm feeling. Oh, fuck me, that sounds so fucking weird, honestly. <laughs> if you're listening to this now, just forget that I ever told you that, okay? <laughs> I'm not weird, I swear to God. At least I'm not that weird, I swear to God. I just like... I just like feeling stuff on my hands, okay? God damn it. Jesus. Let's continue. <laughs> cackle, cackle, cackle. That's what you guys are doing right now, probably. 
That mysterious laugh didn't seem like it could possibly belong to someone with the gentle manly attitude he had been known for. It was as though everything that wasn't necessary for this translation job she had mentioned had been ripped out of him. For the first time, the visitor deeply regretted accepting this task out of a faint curiosity, as if it had been some sort of strange spy game. Oh god, there are even more of them. Again, they are not naked, they wear bodysuits. He suddenly realized that there were about seven or eight of those inhuman gauntlet knights nearby. Gauntlet girls, sorry. Gauntlet girls nearby, forming a large circle around him. I wonder if they're supposed to be the, the goats of this game. Like the basic chud minions. 